This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome once again. Glad to have you with us one more time. I do want to uh, make mention of a couple of deaths that have touched our congregation. Both of them are uh, due to complications of the COVID virus. And uh, it's kind of unfortunate. <clears throat> we also have um, several of our members who have tested positive. We also have yet another one who was exposed to those folks and so is presently under self-quarantine, um, though I am encouraging that individual to get tested anyway, just to make sure. And then at the end of our in-person worship, um, I was given information that two others of our members have also tested positive. Folks, this isn't anything political. This isn't anything theological. This isn't anything except common sense. Mask, safe distance, do those things that are simply common sense because I want you to be able to continue to be with us. And maybe when the time comes, and the situation changes in a positive direction, we can continue to, per, to bring you the power and promise of God's word in hope, in, in, in peace, in comfort, in all of the ways in which God wants us to have richer and fuller lives. So this is really a, a personal thing from me to you, and it's tough. It's wearing on us all, but God has provided us with a promise and with a hope that we can endure. And so just as my opening announcement, if you will, think, I still remember a seminary pastor uh, a seminary professor who uh, gave me the wonderful little Latin phrase, sapera auda, which means basically dare to think. And I've used it with seventh and eighth graders. I've used it with many others. My advice to you, sapera auda, take the risk, dare to think, and then protect yourself and especially reach out to protect others in good and safe ways. It's the call of God, but more about that in a little bit. Without further ado, let's begin our worship on this second Sunday of Advent by coming before the altar of God's grace, confessing our sins and hearing God's words of grace and forgiveness. And so blessed be Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us uh, each and every day in the light of Christ. Amen. <clears throat> People of God, hear the good, glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. 
free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened by God's love. May you be comforted by Christ's peace. And may you be accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With eagerness, we wait for Christ to come again. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> this morning at our in-person worship, we followed our tradition of lighting the Advent wreath. The Advent wreath is a, quite a simple thing. It is simply a ring with four blue candles around the outside and then a central white candle, which will be lit on Christmas Eve. But each of the Sundays leading up, we light another candle. This being the second week of Advent, we will be lighting the second candle. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle of the Advent wreath, the candle of hope. And we lit it again in a, as in a remembrance that Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us. And the second candle of Advent is the candle of peace. Peace is one of the promises that God made for, to us that we continue to hope for. Jesus brought peace when he first came to us and he will bring everlasting, eternal peace when he comes once again. The prophet Isaiah called Jesus the Prince of Peace. When Jesus came, he taught the people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. We light that candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and through him, true peace is found. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the peace you give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your hope and your peace with each other. This we ask in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. And then we recited the words of a familiar hymn for those of us who are uh, familiar with the Lutheran hymnal, light two candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish the darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd as God fulfills the promise. And so now the Lord be with you. And let us join our hearts and, uh, and together in the prayer of the day. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn our attention now to the scripture readings for this Sunday. And our first reading comes from that prophet Isaiah. Here in the 40th chapter, beginning at the first verse, Isaiah announces the promise and the hope and the peace that we have in God. From the prophet Isaiah, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, 
In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of a field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs into his arms and carry them into his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from one of the shorter letters of the New Testament. It happens to be on this Sunday from the second uh, letter that is uh, named for the Apostle Peter, Rocky, <clears throat> the one whose name was Cephas, and Jesus called him Petros, which means rock. From the book of 2 Peter at the, in the third chapter, beginning at the eighth verse, Peter writes, do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we will wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. And therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, Strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the Holy Gospel for this second Sunday of Advent, according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark begins his gospel. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Now John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance 
with the, for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all people of Jerusalem were going out to him. and They were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. But he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This gospel reading for this second Sunday of Advent is particularly poignant, I feel, at this particular time in the life of God's people, this earthly life. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I'm getting pretty tired of all the restrictions. It becomes frustrating. And yet there is an urgency in the call of Christ, in the command of God, and from and for one another. Last Sunday, the theme was be on watch. And so I think that's the way we have to live our lives in this day. Our comfort, our, our level of relationship notwithstanding, but to listen in particular to some of those words from Isaiah's prophecy long before Christ ever came to the world and focus on this. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. What wonderful words for us in this day. Comfort. And this word comfort comes into our hearts from the very heart of God himself. Comfort. That's God's first word, and it is the best word. Now, there are also some other words that come to us from God, words that speak of obedience, discipleship, judgment, wrath. Some of those words are pretty hard for us to hear. Harder still, speaking for myself, to obey as faithfully as God calls us. But in all honesty, should we expect the one who knows us better than we know ourselves to comfort us only? Like a parent who overly protects a child, that would simply be unkind. For when such a child is faced with the day-to-day -day challenges and realities of life, more often than not, that child is found to be ill-equipped and unprepared to function outside of that protected environment. And so for God to comfort us only would simply not be kind. Because we know that to gloss over our nature, our, our infection, if you will, would be to leave us just as we are ill-equipped and unprepared. You see, as we are by ourselves, we simply are not whole. And because our need is so great, there are some words of challenge and even rebuke. You know, I remember back when I was going to be undergoing surgery elective surgery, if you will, realizing that I could have lived with the condition, but in order to assure that, um, <clears throat> that I would be able to live my life as richly and fully as God intended, that it needed to be done. 
full well knowing that I'm going into the hospital feeling just fine and that I would walk away from that hospital facing some challenges and pains and restrictions for a couple of weeks and maybe even a little beyond. We may not welcome those sorts of words from a doctor, someone who's about to perform surgery for our health. Those words can cut into us, causing pain and that very apprehension I shared with you. Self-disclosure time, I had already put it off for several years. Those words that cut into us, causing us pain and apprehension, are not welcome words, but they surely are met by anyone who willingly embarks into a trust of God working through the medical sciences and the caregivers, those who are entrusted to carry out, to be the hands and the feet and the voice of God, telling us, relax, comfort. And especially as followers of the promise, we are also met with those words that we may not welcome, but receive them as we continue our journey, a faithful, spiritual journey into which God has called us. So the first word is and remains comfort. Comfort my people, says our God. In the midst of our own crushing burdens, those, those gnawing anxieties which torment us so terribly, it speaks directly to us. Right beside the suffering we endure on the one hand, which might drive us out of that saving trust that God has given us, there stands also a way to lift up our hearts to, to have a word that says comfort. Comfort my people. This is the beautiful message that breaks forth in this Advent season. For into the wilderness of our hearts and into the deserts of our despair, someone is coming. And with that coming, there is also a call. Isaiah spoke of it in terms of, of a call to make straight in the desert a highway for our God into this wilderness in which we live at present to prepare the way of the Lord. This is the task that is laid upon us, upon you and upon me. This God who comforts us also calls us to prepare his way, to bring others so that they might also know the peace and comfort with which we have been blessed. Now, I want to make something clear because in this day and age, there is cheap comfort which abounds. Now, I'm not talking about those niceties we have through the advance of in accomplishments of science or industry, the quality of life that we have through, through those whom God has gifted with the ability to touch and to heal. Those sorts of things do give us comfort in our environment and in our lives. I don't mean that sort of comfort unless pursuing that form of comfort causes us to lose sight of our calling and our task. Now, I'm talking about comfort, I'm, nor am I, I'm sorry, nor am I talking about comfort 
as safety from attack, safety from nuclear annihilation, safety from nation fighting against nation. No, that cheap comfort I am talking about is speaking directly to those on social media, uh, for those who prefer to get their information from, from the television, on, on, in print, if you're like me who still likes the, the sense of holding a newspaper in my hands as I read and learn. No, I'm speaking about those sorts of things where, where we can listen to and find syrupy messages of comfortableness. Those sweet-sounding sermons Sunday after Sunday, those, those experiences of particular information given to us on a TV screen or, or on a phone in our hand bring us the sort of day in and day out, night after night things that would engulf us with, with, their, with their messages of comfortableness. Those who would believe that, that we can find comfort through our own actions alone. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Oh, just get over it. Yes, there's hope for tomorrow if you vote this way or that way. If you live this way or that way. If you boycott. If you protest. All of those sorts of things will make this go away. They offer us the insurance that we really are quite respectable in our own right. That we have in our own hearts the capacity to, and, and, and the will to create hope all on our own. Hmm. You see, that sort of cheap comfort abounds. If the image presented doesn't meet with your own concept, one button push, a click of a mouse, or, or turn of a page. Yeah, you can find, you can keep doing that until you find the level of comfort, comfortableness that suits you. And in some cases, of course, and it's not beneath me to ask for this, you know, for a meager contribution, we'll even provide you with additional means of, of even greater comfortableness. But I would like to think that we bring a word of true comfort because the one who speaks to us in this Advent knows us better than we even know ourselves. God knows the wildernesses we, into which we wander. He knows the deserts of the world that we have in our hands. And it is right, it is right here into, the, into the, the, the middle of everything that we are called to prepare the way of the Lord. We have been placed to help cause it to blossom and to rejoice. The call to be the hands and feet of God as we prepare the way for the Lord who has promised to come again. This call is ours, but it is laid upon us as a loving task by God himself that joined with his Holy Spirit, it empowers us to bear the burden and the blessing. You see, to avoid this calling is to miss out on some of, of life's most important appointments. The comfort and the call. These two are necessary to be joined together by God. And any attempt to separate the call from the comfort causes us to lose both. And so these 
two things we hear from the mouth of Isaiah, prepare the way of the Lord. So perhaps one way to do this is to to look at the mountains of fear in our lives, the rough places we stumble over because we are afraid. It is in times like this that God reminds us with his infinite love, with his compassion for us, that those mountains can and will lay low, that the rough places will be smoothed away. You see, in this season of Advent, we begin a new church year. And we begin it not in the little town of Bethlehem, but in the mind of God, where all beginnings are. You see, after this season, this prologue, yes, we will witness and celebrate again that birth. But we also will see that birth, reenact that birth. Celebrate that birth with the full well knowledge and the confidence that for us and for our salvation, there will also be a black afternoon outside of a city wall. We do it with confidence, knowing that those little hands that reach up to a mother's face as a little child are the same hands that will be pierced. The same tiny feet with, which kick off a blanket in a manger are the same feet that will be nailed to a cross. The infant voice that cries as its only way of communicating is the same voice which will say on that black afternoon, Father, forgive them. You see, we, be, we view the entirety of life in this Advent season, from cradle to cross and even beyond to that day when Christ will call you and me once again to live with him forever. Were we to face this and all reality without God's faithful promise alive in our hearts, we simply could not, we would not survive. And so God gives us his first word in this Advent season, and it is the best word of all. Comfort, oh comfort my people says your God. Amen. Having shared together in the Holy Scriptures, as we have contemplated these scriptures in our hearts, so now, with boldness, with the whole church in heaven and on earth, we profess our faith. And we do so using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. And we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, dear Lord, or, and now, dear Lord, and now, dear friends, we turn our attention now to the, to the God of power and might, to whom we pray to tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world, whom we ask to hear our prayers for all those who are in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it needs your healing touch. Mend the wounds and restore balance so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. We pray for the world that the leaders of all the nations would turn their hearts to you and work for peace among all peoples. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend to those who are sick or struggling, especially those whom we name in our hearts. Gather all people into your healing embrace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And leading God, we pray for those in our families, congregation and community who are not joyful in this holiday season is in our busy and fast-paced lives. Grant us the gift of patience and trust in your steadfast love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work especially remembering Tom and David, whom we mourn today. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And finally, draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to boldly pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear friends, thanks once again for being with us this week. Have God's blessings abundantly in this week. Patience to strengthen our journey, and the love of Christ to glow and lighten our hearts. The creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. 
the long expected Savior, fill you with love, and the unexpected Spirit guide you in your journey. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See you next week.